In this video, we're going to look at the .p marking portion of the Automator product line. After looking at some of the product features, we're going to go through an example mark setup as well as look at a few example marks. The power of these .p marking systems is in their versatility. There are numerous handheld and fixed options that can be run from one of two controllers. Let's look at the controllers first. First we have the AC250 benchtop controller. It will work with all heads, requires a PC for development and execution of marks, and will do serial numbers, 2D barcodes, images, and many other features. This is ideal for small run marking. Next up we have the AC500 controller. Like the 250, it will work with all heads and mark serial numbers, 2D barcodes, and images. But unlike the 250, it has a built-in touchscreen controller which can be used for the development of all the marks. The AC500 can also be panel mounted. It has serial or I.O. connections for PLCs, as well as many industrial protocols including Profinet and Ethernet IP. All of these things make it ideal for integration. Next let's look at the marking heads. These come in five sizes. The smallest being a 25mm by 60mm marking window. This is ideal for handheld operations or for very small marks. Next one is the 25mm by 120mm marking window. While no taller, it is twice the width, providing for longer marks. The third option is the 50mm by 90mm marking window. This is the most commonly used option and ideal for just about any application. The next size up, the 120mm by 160mm, as well as having the standard integration and handheld options, has a deep marking option with larger valves that allow it to get deeper into those marks. And lastly, for those really large marking jobs, there is one head that is a 300mm by 400mm. Just like there's a wide variety of head sizes, there's various pin types available. With six dot types, two vibro types, and even electric, there's one for every application. Now let's take a quick look at setting up a basic program. First thing we need to do is change from user mode to supervisor mode so that we can edit a program. Now let's open the editing tool. First thing we want to do is create a new program. I don't need to save this one because it's already been saved. We'll need to give our program a name. Next we'll want to add some elements to the mark. We'll start by putting in some text. Let's make that text identifying a part number. While we don't need to do this, let's position this on the marking canvas. Let's also adjust the size of the text. And let's change it from high quality to normal to speed up the mark a little bit. And now let's add another element. Again, let's add another line of text. This time we'll denote it as being a serial number. And like last time, let's anchor it on the canvas. Lastly, let's adjust the size of the font again. And to make this mark more interesting, let's add one more element, this time a 2D data matrix barcode. We'll start off by entering the value that will be contained within this barcode. And again, we'll anchor this on the canvas. And let's give the vertical dimension a size. 15 millimeters should be a good size for this code. So now that we've added some elements, let's have a look at the canvas to see how our mark will look. From here we can make some adjustments. I'm going to adjust the size of the code and rearrange it a bit. Now we are ready to mark it. Here we can see the estimated cycle time to do this mark. Again, we'll have a look at the canvas. We should also check to make sure that the marking area is on where we want it on the part. To do this, we'll click the check area box, and then we'll verify that our system is online, and then we will hit the play button. This will take the pin out and around the total outside perimeter of the marking area. Next, we can run the pin through a dry run to make sure that there's no impediments or anything that will get in the way of the marking. This is a good way to make sure that the mark ends up where you want it without actually firing the mark.
And now let's look at a few example marks. Here we see a basic text mark on metal. Here's another metal mark, this time marking a 2D data matrix code. This is the marking of another 2D data matrix code, this time on hardened steel using the deep marker. This is an example of using the additional access control to mark on two different levels. Another use for the additional axis is to turn the parts that we can mark on a curve. Lastly, to show the precision, we are going to use a vibra pin to mark on glass.